Hey guys, it's Special here, and welcome back to another Orlando City series episode. Of course, building a dynasty with Orlando City is the aim of this series, and um, yeah, things are going quite well at the moment, um, which is, I'm going to say expected, because it's what I, you know, kind of expected going into this season, but I didn't really think it would happen with all the constant injuries that have, you know, occurred again. It's it's like a bloody common trend at the moment, and, um, you know, if I was losing the games, I would be really, you know, disheartened about it, but we're actually winning. We had a little sticky patch um, just after the first game of the season, which you guys saw in the preseason episode. Um, but yeah, let's get into the uh, fixtures first of all. Um, you guys saw the one-all draw with Seattle in the opening game of the MLS. We then beat FC Dallas 4-1. Pretty impressive result, I have to say. Alan Simpson in his second game for the um, for Orlando manages to pick up a hat trick. Very impressive. Um, another regen, Sean, Sean Saavedra. Try saying that name, you know, five times really quickly. Sean Saavedra. He also managed to pick up a goal for himself um, from the midfield, which I was quite impressed with. Uh, we did give away a penalty though, which was a little bit disappointing, not to keep the clean sheet there. The next game was another victory, this time at home, coming against Real Salt Lake. Nice little 3-0 victory there. Rivas, Breck Shea, and Tim Doyle, another one of the new regens from the draft, getting on the score sheet there. Um, Shea picked up man of the match with his goal, and I think he had an assist, or maybe even two assists, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, very impressive game for him as well. And uh, nice to see him get on the score sheet. We then lost to San Jose, 1-0 away from home. Um, as you can see, it was pretty even, to be honest. Um, they just got the goal. Pretty much lucky to get it as well. Zat Knight, I think, was at fault for it. Um, you know, lacking a little bit of pace as he's getting on the um, the old years department. We then managed a boring nil-all drub match against Kansas City. Uh, the less said about that, the better. We then lost 4-2 to Vancouver in Canada. Pretty disappointed with this result, to be honest. As you can see, they opened the scoring early on. They pretty much got 4-0 um, up. We managed to get two back through a uh, reverse brace. But um, as you can see, both of his goals were quite late on in the game. Um, the next game was against another Canadian team, this time Toronto FC. However, it was played at the, in Florida at the Citrus Bowl. And um, yeah, nice little 2-0 victory there. Rivas again on the score, sh score sheet. Sorry. And Zat Knight also on the score sheet off of a set piece, which is, you know, what he's there for. He is, you know, a massive player, and he's quite the beast in the air. We then beat Portland 1-0 away from home. We hadn't actually beat Portland up until this point, so really nice to get um, the victory over them. Zat Knight once again on the score sheet, coming from a late corner, and, um, yeah, played pretty well with his defensive displays as well. Kept them to zero shots and target. They also picked up a red card through Will Johnson, um, just after half time, which I guess helped us quite a bit as he's their captain. We then set out for revenge against Chicago, who, of course, if you watched the um, last, uh, sorry, not the last episode, episode five, which was the end of regular season review, um, and the live come against Chicago in the last game, they sent us out of the wild card uh, playoff spot. So looked for revenge, nil all draw. Boring as shit. Anyway, moving on. DC United was up next. A 3-1 victory away from home in the capital. Very impressive result, to be honest. Alan Simpson came back from injury. Managed to get on the score sheet. Saavedra, again on the score sheet. And I mean, I hate repeating myself, but Carlos Rivas, again, on the score sheet. Uh, they actually had two players sent off in this game. Um, Medeiros put in a two-footed challenge on Rivas at the end of the game. Got a straight red. And uh, Halsey earlier in the game, picked up two yellows. And the final game I played, which was supposed to be the live con today, was the Montreal Impact game. Um, I actually got a little bit carried away. Um, kept playing, and as you can see, we managed to pick up a 2-0 victory. Would have been brilliant for the live con. Chris Tierney scored an absolute peach of a free kick here. He also picked up uh, the Man of the Match award uh, by assisting Doyle's goal. Very impressed with him. Before this game, I actually... Um, warned him about his recent poor form, because he was, I think he was averaging like a 6.65 over the last 
five games or whatever. And um, he had been playing midfield to that point. But there you go. What a fucking free kick that was. Um, so, yeah, I said that to him. He said, what are you talking about, boss? I've, you know, been playing well. And I said, well, go out there and prove it to me or whatever. And, um, yeah, he managed to do that, pick up a nine match rating and, yeah, score a goal and pick up an assist. So, yeah, full credit to him. Um, my words kind of bit me in the ass there. Anyway, that does mean we have a New York City live comm today, which I'll be getting into in a second. But first of all, we need to look at the Olympic qualifications. As you can see, we finished third in Group B. Yeah, we missed out on the semi-finals here. Um, let me just go back to the group stage. Um, we're in Group B. As you can see, we finished behind Mexico and Costa Rica, who actually won all three games, which was kind of surprising. Um, if you have a look at the fixture... Oh, that's the last fixtures. Um, I'll go into my... Yeah, that'll probably be better. As you can see, we managed to... Um, we actually... I'll go into the game, but we actually managed to open the scoring here through uh, my Orlando player, Kyle Laren. And, um, yeah, looking good. You know, 1-0 up. And then John Rui scores, who I think plays for Lille or something like that. Yeah, he does. Um, pretty decent player, actually. And, yeah, he managed to score five minutes after. Then they went in front, and that was pretty much it. As you can see, their centre-back picked up man of the match performance. And, um... Yeah, we just couldn't really do anything after they scored their first goal, so... Kind of disappointing. We probably should have gotten the win over them there, but... I guess it just wasn't to be. Then we drew nil all with Mexico, who I thought would absolutely destroy us off the planet. Um, yeah, nothing really happened in this game. Um, as you can see, their defender once again picked up a man of the match performance, this time with a 9.0, so... Yeah, and we also picked up three injuries to some of our best, well, some of the best players in the team. You know, Dan Sotovic, um, very good attacking midfielder. Uh, Marcina, who's the best right back we could ever, you know, really have, I suppose. Very strong defensively and uh, got, got, you know, half decent pace on him. And Lassange, um, extremely good winger for the under-23 level, despite his mentals, but who cares about those? Um, yeah, all three of those players got injured. Um, I had already made three subs as well up until that point, so I had to play with ten men, and we still managed to get a draw out of that and not concede. And, of course, in the final game was the Cuba victory. Um, I predicted this one, but it was pretty straightforward, I guess. Scored in the fifth minute, Chapman, Piete in the 44th, and Van Wonderen in the 88th after they made it 2-1. But Piete... Um, picking up man-of-the-match performance there. He's a half-decent player. I play him in the centre and midfield. I, use, I actually use the same tactic, the even flow tactic. Um, I do have a video for that with a download link if you are interested in downloading uh, my tactic. Um, so, yeah, that was basically it for the qualifications. Um, if we go back into the final, America did win it on penalties against Mexico, which I find quite interesting. Um, Mexico didn't beat us. And they made it to the final, so... Yeah, full credit to us, I suppose. Costa Rica did finish third, beating El Salvador in the third place playoff. Um, and yeah, Zelalem, absolutely beasting it. Five assists, 8.18 match rating. Um, who's this bloke? I've never really looked at him before. Chicago defender. Anyway, so yeah, enough about that. Let's get into the game today, um, and I'll go over the... Uh, ladder or the league table after we finish this game. Um, today's lineup will be Tally Hall in goal. Ramos, who's played pretty much every game at right back this season, has been very, very, um, very, very solid. He's really, you know, stood out so far. Um, currently on a 7.04 over the course of the season, but uh, 7.12 in his last five games. So, looking good, looking good. We've got Zat Knight, who's currently on fire despite being at the ripe age of 35. Um, as you can see, he's still pretty pretty solid. Very good in the air, good jumping. Um, Apara, our captain, looking strong as ever, 27 years old, in the prime of his career. Um, also playing very well. Um, and yeah, Tierney. Um, as you can see, his average rating is quite low, but, you know, <laughs> his rating that he got last game is shot that straight up. As you can see, it was quite low, fairly average, and then boom. 
Um, then we've got Savidra, again, playing very well. A lot better than I expected. You know, he's not exactly, you know, primed for this position either, um, as a roaming playmaker, but he's doing well. Um, Alexander just came back from injury. He'll be partnering him in the centre of midfield. Um, we've got Ayala, the draftee that I picked up, playing as our AMC, simply because Kaka has picked up another injury. Yeah. Uh, I think he's... He, uh, oh, is he back? He might be back. Uh, no, he's still injured. Okay. I don't know why that's not appearing on the thing, but anyway. Still injured. Um, I think he picked up like a two-month injury or something. And um, yeah, Kugo is actually coming back from injury, which is really good. Really happy for that, because I'm currently lacking in the midfield depth massively. Um, there were a couple of games that I just went over in the re fixture review um, that I played three defenders on the bench, and that was it. I had Redding, Spittleberg, and Burling. And, yeah, no other plays at all to play on the bench, or coming off the bench, I suppose. So we've got Simpson, who's been pretty outstanding so far in his debut season. And we've got Breck Shea, as always, on the left. Has kind of dropped off recently, but, you know, still looking strong with the 7.34 over the, you know, season so far. And you got Rivas, who scored five goals so far. You know, not setting the world alight by any means, but being, you know, somewhat consistent compared to last season, I suppose. So that's good. Um, Martinez has just complained about game time. Um, so I'm definitely going to give him um, a little run of games after this one. Um, I felt like this was a pretty important fixture, so I'm going to leave Tally Hall in the goals. Um, I'm going to look to sell Tally Hall at the end of the season. Um, he's 30 years old now, and I, you know, I'm quite confident that I could probably get two draft picks for him. Um, so that would be really good. And then I have Martinez to fill in, who I think is, you know, just as good a goalkeeper as he is. So happy for that. And, um, yeah, that's about it. The bench day will be Martinez, Burling, Spittleberg, Redding, Doyle, Laren, and Alston. And let's go. Let's do this. As you can see, we're currently sitting first on top of the Eastern Conference, which is really good. New York are actually in fourth, so they're doing quite well um, at the same time as us. Their lineup today, um, got Discord and Lampard in the centre of their midfield. Quite an attacking 4-4-2 formation there. They've got David Villa up front. Poku, who's a half-decent player. Um, Boateng in the back line is a Manchester City loanee. And um, yeah, they've got a couple of decent players on the bench, like Shelton, Grabovoy, Palm is a decent fullback. And, um, yeah, they got Blake in goals, who is half-decent as well as a goalkeeper. I'm going to tell them to carry on from where they left off, and we'll try and pump them up and tell them they've got exactly what it takes to play for this fine club that we're trying to build into a dynasty, as the uh, title suggests. All right. We've got a highlight here. What can we do, boys? Simpson out wide. Simpson shoots on. Oh, crosses it. Brett Shea. Oh, my God. He almost scored. That was a nice little play by Simpson, though. I was expecting him to shoot, to be honest. Interesting. Simpson again. Crosses again. Boateng out. Savidra. A good ball. Rivas. Good tackle, though. Could have looked like a penalty. Oh, Tinny with a free kick. Oh, off the crossbar. Damn it, he almost had two and two. Two and two games with these free kicks there. And New Yorker on the ball here. Oh, brilliant tackle by Apara there. Almost broke his leg in half. Lampard. Poku's got a knock. Mullins, 1-0. Oh, off the post. Oh, and they get rid of it. That was so lucky. I thought we were behind straight away. How is Tierney offside? What's he doing all the way up the field? Ramos. Simpson now. Ayala. Alexander. Just back from injury. Plays it out wide to Tierney. Rivas. Oh, but Tierney's offside again. 
Stay on side, mate. We would have had a fucking goal there. Come on. Oh, Rivas. In the box. Lays it back. Ayala! Oh, what a goal! Screamer by Ayala. Ayala. Couldn't even say his name properly. First goal of the season as well. And what a bloody goal that was. My god. It was a rocket. Tell the boys I'm happy. Even though I'm not really happy because we pretty much got lucky there. Try and keep him pumped up. Okay. 1-0 up, away from home at the Yankee Stadium. Something else I noticed on uh, New York's um, facility page, they're actually building a new stadium as well. And their capacity is something like 45,000 or something like that for their new stadium, which is 2,000 less than Yankee Stadium, which they're in now, um, despite, I think their normal games, they're only allowed 30,000 capacity. Which is interesting, but still, 30,000 is pretty decent. So I'm getting a new stadium with 19,500. They're getting a new stadium with 45,000. But we have a bigger fan base than them. Which is interesting. Anyway. I don't really get that poor planning by the Orlando City um, management, I guess. And that looks like a bad tackle there. I think Boateng's going to get sent off here. Straight red. Yep. See you later, mate. He's gone. Okay. Down to ten men. I'm just going to give a team talk to the boys here and just tell them to concentrate. Just because, uh, you know, the last few minutes of the game. Can we hold on for the 1-0 victory here? Ten seconds left. Lampard. Monario. Discord. And that's full time. 1-0 victory. That's our first victory over New York City, so I think that's a massive result. I'm really going to praise the boys today. wasn't the best performance, but the defense played really well, so I'm quite happy with that. They didn't really respond to that, but anyway. And yeah, we are currently outright first by five points. Looking good. Really looking good. Really need to try and keep this momentum going, though. Because I definitely want to get um, a playoff spot straight away. Ooh, that player looks half decent. Bournemouth. Check him on the shortlist and we'll see how we go. So we'll have to replace uh, Zat Knight soon. So, yeah, we've got to keep a lookout for future centre-backs. So, yeah, that's going to be the end of the episode, guys. Um, we are also currently sitting... Let me jump into competitions for a second. Uh, for Orlando, please. Yeah, we're currently sitting first on the uh, Supporter Shield as well, by one point. Um, but obviously Vancouver can go ahead of us if they win their game in hand, and so can San Jose if they win both of their games in hand. So, yeah. Um, really happy with how this season's going so far, guys. Um, I hope you guys are enjoying the second season as well. And um, I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Goodbye.